chapter 16. No boss, no foundation, no direction. I think that possibly the number one reason people think entrepreneurship is cool is because you no longer have a boss. Well, I noticed something. That's also the number one reason why you can fail. See, when you're running a business and you're in charge of it, you are solely responsible for everything. Someone who doesn't know any better would say, well, what if you hire the best people to work under you? That's still under the umbrella of a boss. If you have people working under you, you're still responsible for hiring the person who hired them, who hired them, who hired them. Get the point? But for the most part, anybody reading this book won't have that many people working for them, if any. Most of you reading this book are just starting out. It's just going to be you. Most people reading this book will be sole operators or have a few employees under them. I know that because the basis of starting a business has entirely changed since the past. In the past, there were a lot of barriers to entry which made starting a viable business very hard. They certainly took more money, more time, and more planning. In today's world, you can literally get an idea today and start it tomorrow. So when you are the owner, yes, you can do whatever you want each day. You can work hard for as long as you like, and you can quit for as long as you like. But that's not what I'm referring to as challenging in entrepreneurship. That's just freedom. What I'm referring to is the fact that when you're the boss, you can be doing something entirely wrong for a long time or a short time, and you won't even know it. Why? Because when you're the one responsible for all the decision making, your decisions are only as sharp as your knowledge and wisdom. When you're in the beginning of entrepreneurship, you're going to be considered as wet behind the ears, still green, a newbie. So when you're a newbie, you're going to make mistakes. It's part of the journey. Don't worry about that. It can it can be as complex as the process of foundation on down to the intricate technical details of a very small project. But each time you learn what you've been doing wrong, you just have to take note and never forget. You know, fool me once, it's your fault. Fool me twice, it's mine. That type of thing. It's no longer like an employee. When you work for someone and the internet goes down, you have nothing to do anymore. You can sit at your desk and kick the bull with the other employees and have a jolly old time. I remember those days. One time when I was back working customer service at Bank of America straight out of college, something went wrong with the system that we were using and it was down for like two hours. And when something happened to the system or software that we were using, if it had an issue, then we just couldn't use it. There was absolutely nothing to do. I remember that day, a lot of us went to the local restaurant and maybe even had a drink or two. Just had fun. Those were one of the joyous moments as a customer service employee that I can remember. I literally hated all the rest, though. <laughs> but regardless, I still learned a lot from being in positions like that. Now, let's take that same exact problem and apply it to working for yourself. When I have a problem that happens, I have to do two things. First, I must take action as soon as possible to handle it. Second, I must also simultaneously work on other tasks at the same time. If the problem is a really big one, though, I usually have to stop everything and handle that one immediately. You see, no matter what happens that presents a problem for me, I have to keep the show going. That's the difference. The show does not stop. The world doesn't give one single care as to what problem you have. If you want to keep going, you got to figure out a way around it or solve it. When you're an employee, you don't have to think that way. When something's messed up, it's just messed up. And quite often, the only thing you can do is assign a work order or something like that to get it handled. Now, I know that's not everybody's situation, but that's what it's like for a lot of the workforce. Another good example is the platform that I use to create my content. Now that we have it understood that there is a huge difference between the entrepreneur's responsibility versus the employee accountability, I'll explain it from another angle. So I use Adobe Creative Cloud to create all my media. It's a huge assortment of different software that can create almost anything. Anything. It costs me like $59 per month or something close to it. A lot of people in the video creating world use pirated software. 
It's an absolutely free method of using different software that you need. Now, that may seem like I'm wasting my money by paying $59 per month, right? When these people are pretty much downloading the, pro the same program for free. Hell no. See, what rookies don't know is that when you're using pirated software, it becomes very buggy and you can't get assistant if there's a problem because you didn't pay for it. Also, usually it's not the full program with all of its features. So there's a lot of problems that could come from using an unstable platform that can work, but isn't guaranteed. It's my responsibility to be fully aware of those pros and cons when choosing software. It didn't take much for me to choose to pay for my Adobe membership. Reason being is because I know that I'm running a business, so I must make sure that it can run like a well-oiled machine. If I was to choose to use the free version, the pirated software that you can download online, I would essentially be choosing to work with a platform that is often shaky, slow, and full of problems. So that would affect my output for my clients. No, sir. Not going to happen with me. I show up for my clients. I remember a guy I met who was another videographer. I actually hired him for a couple different projects of my own. One time, I went to his house where he lived with his parents to go over some footage. We get to his room and he opens up the program and shows me what he was doing. I noticed that the program was moving really slow. I asked him, is your computer making Adobe move slow like that? He laughed and said, no, not at all, and began to explain the specs on his computer. Now his was actually a computer that was very similar, if not better than mine. So I asked what's making it move that slow. He then let me know that he knows it moves slow and he just deals with it because he's using the pirated version of Adobe. I remember saying to myself, this guy's never going to own his own production company and be successful. I didn't say anything to him much further than lightly advising that I think he should use the paid version because I knew his ass won't going to listen. I mean, I was tripping in my head. I couldn't believe how he actually thought that was OK. It was the equivalent to having a car, but not ever driving it because you don't want to put gas in it. It just didn't make the smallest amount of sense possible for me. Don't think that I'm trying to say he had to pay for the program just like me because maybe he couldn't afford it. Who knows? I'm saying that he should have focused on choosing a different option so that his workflow could be more dependable. But like I said, that guy wasn't ready for all that. He just liked to edit videos and wanted to run his own company but most likely never would if he continued to think that way. So along your journey, you're going to be responsible for many decisions. That's why you must consistently stay sharp in all ways, physically, mentally, educationally, and up to date with technological advances as well as current events. When developing your foundation for your business, be sure to choose the best decisions and don't let money be the determining factor of everything. You're going to have to pay to get ahead in some situations.